is a kind of a quaint, small little town. Yeah, I think probably half the town is involved in our case. Bud and Latina Matlock met each other after high school, fell madly in love, got married pretty quickly, and they had a family together on November the 16th, 2002. Latina was killed inside her home, cooking supper, folding clothes. It was just a heinous scene. Bud was rushed moments later as he pulled into his driveway. They chased him down the street and shot at him and killed him with a bullet to the back of the head. The little baby was in the back in a car seat when it happened, but unbelievably, he was not harmed. One of the ways to describe this murder would be an ambush. Double homicide makes it, what, a capital murder then, right? Yeah, there are a bunch of suspects. I don't have nothing to do with this murder. Get the off my property. This case was always going to be complicated because we had five suspects, five real suspects. Everybody knows the same people, right? There are going to be a lot that know what's going on that hopefully we can find and talk to to help us figure out what happened. Yes. It has been 16 years and still no answer. Police answers. consider her killing a cold case. Years later, the case is still unsolved. There are so many cold cases out there just waiting to be solved. The crime scene ultimately tells the story of the murder. We want to bring justice to these victims. Hey guys. Hey. I'm Kelly. Donnie Tabor. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Hi, Yolanda McClary. Nice Donnie. to meet you. Nice to meet, meet Jim. Jim Bailey. Nice, nice to meet later. you. Hey. Hey. Here's our How compadres. For this case, we brought in Dee Dee Shirley and Johnny Bond. How are you? Donnie Tabor. Dee Dee Shirley. Glad to meet you. They're two very skilled investigators, and we're going to need them on this case. Why don't we start with y'all telling us about the day you made the scene? I was in the station. We got a call. By the time I got there, they had already started putting the tape up. The victims were Bud and Latina Matlock, Sean. A lot of people call it Bud and Sean Matlock. A younger couple, 24 and 26, married, had a few kids. You knew him? Uh, well, a small town, yeah. Okay. Bud had come a long way. In the last year and a half, he really turned his life around. Latina I worked at the hospital, caring mother, good person. Bud and Latina had recently joined the church. He was a coach for a little basketball team here. She worked in a really respected job, and it's just so sad they had to die this way. It was just a heinous scene, you know? It, this, this affected me. Tell us what happened that night. It's my belief the suspects went to the house believing that Bud was going to be there. And when they entered the residence, they encountered Latina and shot her once in the head with the 38 revolver. And, I mean, she was executed, and that, and that bothered me uh, tremendously. And then they waited for Bud to arrive. When Bud pulled into the driveway, suspect that had the 380 immediately came out of the door and started shooting into the driver's side car. Bud took off running down the road, and then the suspect that had the 38 shot him one time in the back of the head. What were your thoughts on Dwayne Crosby? I'm not looking at him as a suspect. Dwayne Crosby was in the front passenger seat as the car was being shot up. He managed to get away, but only remembers seeing the muzzle flashes, and he couldn't make out any of the shooter's faces. Big deal, unusual for your town, though, right? Oh, yeah. I can't get it out of my head. Bud and Latina were building a life together, but it was all cut short. So you want to hope that the people in Malvern will come forward with what they know really happened that day 11 years ago. Let's talk about our suspects. Okay, so now we got Arthur Kane Jr., CJ, our main suspect. CJ and Latina were friends, but there were rumors that they were also having an affair. Bud broke his jaw a little over two months before all this happened. Yeah, I think that this was the catalyst. Bud caught CJ and Latina in the car together, and that's where the confrontation started, where he got his jaw broke. Revenge and women, the two best motives that exist. He's the only one that really has a motive. Well, before the homicide, he's telling several people that he's going to kill him. And then y'all had a rumor that CJ tried to hire someone to kill Bud. We also know that he chained a custody on the gun. Yes. Oh, good. He has one. possession of a 38 day before the murders, yeah. With all the circumstantial evidence against him, an arrest warrant was issued for CJ a few days after the murder. But inconsistent statements by witnesses and an inability to figure out who else was involved led to the charges being dropped. 
We all still feel like CJ is the shooter or he planned the whole thing and had someone else do the shooting for him. So to prove a case against CJ, we need to have a clear understanding of how he was involved or who was with him. All right, next we got Ronnie Doby. An anonymous tip was received that Doby had been involved in the shooting and Doby did it for Kane. Everyone, almost to a person, agrees the one with the criminal mind to be able to commit such a cold blooded capital murder is Rodney Doby. He's very violent. He has a past criminal history. Everybody in this town is afraid of Rodney Doby, and I do mean everybody. He tells a bunch of people he did he it. He tells people he did it. Yeah, he brags. Keyshawn. On the other hand, Keyshawn Reed is a good friend of CJ's, but he's more reserved and if he's involved he's far less likely to brag about it there were several people that came forward and said that he did it doby says he saw Keyshawn running, running from, the, from scene. the scene since his name has come up multiple times we have to investigate him okay little miss diana diana brandon is rodney doby's sister and a lot of people have talked about the very unusually tight bond that diana had with cj y'all put in here that she was extremely nervous during her interview she's not a nervous type person yeah okay what about lewis mitchell he's detained with cj right after the murder lewis is an outsider and the youngest of the group and when the police showed up to investigate him he started acting really strange lewis was going crazy I mean, he was literally out of his mind wanting to know what was going on. And then CJ was like, just don't worry about it. Just cooperate. Just tell him what you know. He failed the polygraph, Lewis Mitchell? He did fail the polygraph. This thing has gotten muddy. And after eight years, we start stirring around again. We're going to have to be real selective about who we talk to and what order we talk to. Malvern is a really small town, and that means that everybody involved really, really knows everybody. So when it comes time to testify against someone you know, that's always difficult. In this case, it's more so because you're testifying against someone who you know is a thug or maybe a criminal or who's done violent things before and you're afraid. So the Malvern Police Department has worked on this case for 11 years, they've never given up, but they keep running into that same brick wall because nobody wants to tell the rest of the story. You. Nice to meet you. Johnny May? Yes, ma'am. How are you doing? Johnny May is Bud's mom, and she's been raising Bud and Latina's son, Latron, since their death. This is my baby. <laughs> it, it being a small town, you know everybody. So at different functions, I would see Johnny May. And, you know, I just wanted it really solved because, you know, to look in her face, to look in the brother's eyes, think about the child. But, you know, you'd like to give a resolution. I guess you know he's handsome. Well, everybody always told me. <laughs> and she was sweet right off the bat. Yeah. yeah. He had to be sweet to put up with Bud. <laughs> <laughs> he brought her to the house one night. And thing I knew I heard one day, they done got married after Christmas. It was a day yeah, day after the Christmas. Christmas story right yeah. there because I was coming down Moline Street and I asked him, what was he doing? He said, well, Mom, I'm getting ready to go get married. You want to go with me? <laughs> <laughs> he must have been in love. <laughs> so how long were they married? So they didn't quite make a year. Okay. They didn't quite make a okay. year. Okay. Yeah. But I thank God that they did yeah. get married. Um, That's nice. And their son, who was in the back seat of the car. Latron. Uh-huh. He's got a game today. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. So he's in what grade? Two kids. Eight. So you raised him? Mm-hmm. All by yourself? Wow, good for you. He's a good boy. Mm -hmm. He's a loving kid. He cares right. about people. You know, they never gave up working on it. We can't promise you anything. And I understand that. We feel like we can make some really good progress. Thank God. So what's your plan for this morning? We're going to walk through our crime scene. This is an interesting crime scene, knowing that you've got two different calibers going, two different shooters. It's pretty complicated. So in order to get a better understanding, I think we should map this out. Well, we'd like to go in. Yep. The night of the homicide, we saw her right there. And so we immediately went to clear the rest of the house. We saw some food cooking. 
the laundry was in the kitchen. Okay. Like so she maybe, was cooking and doing laundry all the time. Maybe she answered time. the door that she was holding. They bum rush her through the door. Bud was in her car, wasn't he? Yes. So but they probably, probably they thought, might he, have was thought he was here. And they were going to bum rush him through the door, and it ends up being her. I'm thinking Latina was not the intended victim. The shooters may have been expecting Bud to be home. And when Latina answered, I think they panicked and killed her. Okay, Kelly, I want you to be Latina. Dee Dee, the 38 revolver. Johnny, can you be the 380 auto? Yep. Kelly, Latina was inside when the 380 and 38 come through the door. She's cooking, so we're assuming here's a knock at the door and goes and answers. The 38 revolver comes in first. So once inside, whoever the 38 guy is has total control of her. Takes her. Like this. I'm going to guess yeah. they're asking where's Bud, because they expected him to be here, not her. So we're fairly certain that the shot was fired before Bud. Before yeah. he arrived. Okay. Boom! You get shot, you go down. At this point, Bud and Dwayne pull up. 380 shooter wham. slams open the screen door, comes out onto the patio. Bam, bam, start bam, shooting. Bam, at least four times. The glass shatters. Dwayne hears the gunfire and runs out from the car. 380 auto bam, keeps bam. firing. Out of ammo. 380 shooters out of ammunition or the gun is jammed. Bud takes off running. 38 shooter goes after Bud, chasing him down the street where we know he fires at least three shots. Boom! Boom! Two shots go into residences, and one goes into the back of Bud's head. Boom! For nearly 30 seconds, bullets are flying all over the neighborhood. It's that corner right here. This is where it gets hit. It's right here. It's still here. It's really horrifying to see the level of violence that took place in this residential neighborhood. Yeah, I see bullet hole in 728. It really shows the importance of the neighbors who witnessed all of this. 802. So what we really need to do is track them all down and see what they really saw. <laughs> We are investigating the 2002 murder of Bud and Latina Matlock. The two loving parents were married less than a year when she was shot dead in their home, and he was shot out on the street in front of their house just moments later. One would think with it only being 8.15 at night in the middle of the street, somebody had to have seen who did this. What's so lousy is the people who were right there in the area at the time of the murders are inconsistent and evasive in their interviews. Like it has been so long. The police believe it's because some of them really were involved in buying and selling drugs, and it could be just because they were just flat scared. And pretty much all the information I gave you was good information, but I didn't see anything. We didn't hear the shooting in the house. You don't know who they were? Uh, no. Somebody's lying, and we don't know which one is. I don't know who he was or nothing. How does that make sense to you? It don't. I don't need to hear anymore. I don't even know why we're wasting our time. I don't understand why you won't tell me. We're still hoping to get some more people in the neighborhood who might have witnessed the murders. On the evening that everything happened, 13-year-old Heather Barnett happened to be walking down the street. She was right there when Bud pulled up in his driveway. She saw a shooting in front of her very eyes. Heather is now 25, but she still remembers that night. I hear it sounds like black hat firecrackers. And I went, whoa. You and turned I, back and looked. I turned back and looked, and I see just, just like fire, you know, shell casings like that fire or whatever. Do you see the shooter? He was shooting like this. Oh, he had it sideways. Like, you know. Gangster style. Yeah. Okay. You're seeing all this. What did you do? Okay, I looked at him. Then I got, oh. Run! Just after the murders, the Malvern Police Department showed her some pictures and a photo spread to try and see if she could possibly identify either one of the shooters. I started from one, and I looked, and when I got to the number that I got to, his face and just the gunfire just, like, exploded in my mind. Like, you know, like, my heart sank. Uh, like, that is him. Okay. You know, without a shadow of a doubt. Who did she pick out? She identified Lewis Mitchell. Okay. I know without a child felt that's who it was. I mean, that's who did it. 
We know that Lewis Mitchell was detained with CJ right after the murders, and Heather is still very convincing. However, because Heather Barnett was only 13 when she saw all this, and then you also know you have something that's called cross-racial identification. If you're white, identifying a black suspect is a whole lot different than a black person identifying a black suspect. So despite her certainty, we just need more. We need to talk to more witnesses, and with the reopening of Bud and Latina's case, one has come forward to tell us what they know. We've hidden their identity to protect them. Bud beat up CJ and broke his jaw. I was like, so, uh, you did that to Bud and Shine? He was like, yeah, I did it. I was like, why you kill her? And he was like, he didn't mean to. He said that he just went in, you know, when they went over there, they kicked in the door and they went in to go get, but I bet he wasn't there. I don't know. CJ and another guy was the ones who did the murder. Okay, so it's yeah. CJ. I don't know the other guy's name. They call him, you remember any nickname or anything? Keyshawn. That's his name. Keyshawn. He told me straight up. I shot the son. Bitch started acting crazy. I lost it. We went outside, but it was pulling up. He was getting out the car with the kids. He started running up the street. Keyshawn shot him in the back of the head. Pop, pop, pop. All right. He told me just like that. You know what I'm saying? He was like, he moves out. So now we have a witness who doesn't give us the young outsider Lewis Mitchell as a second shooter. This witness says it's CJ's good friend, Keyshawn Reed. We got to talk to both of them and figure this out. Lewis Mitchell is out of state and they're searching for him now, but we found Keyshawn Reed. If you want to tell your story, I'll let you start from that afternoon. We know you went to Pine Bluff. Me and my son's mother right, left to go to Pine Bluff. What time did you get back? I think it was around 9 or 9.30. Keyshawn claims that he was out of town till after 8.15. We have witnesses that say differently. I've got you back here by 6 o'clock. Got somebody that saw you here at 6 p.m. That's a bunch of. We're gonna know the whole truth when we arrest CJ because he's gonna flip. He's gonna try to save his ass. It's a capital murder. Mm -hmm. He could get death for him. I tell you who gets the deal. The first one to confess and drop it on everybody else. I got the wrong guy because I didn't you know how to do with it. You're almost there. I can see it in your eyes. Now's the time to do it. My right hand of God, I'd die and go to hell before I take a charge that I ain't do. I've been working on murder cases for 40 years. I know bullshit when I hear it. I just hear it. All I can tell you is that the two shooters is Rodney and CJ. Rodney and CJ are the trigger men. So our eyewitness gives us Lewis Mitchell. I know without a shock though, but that's who it was. Our confidential source gives us Keyshawn Reed. Keyshawn, that's his name. And now Keyshawn gives us the career criminal Rodney Doby. Who knows what to believe? There's more to that. What do you want to know? Who was in the car? What car? The car that they left in. You know. It's all right, Keyshawn. Tell me what you know. You've been holding back. Dana was a driver. Dana? Driving what car? The Mustang. And you saw Dana? Oh, I saw Dana with my own eyes. Although we don't know how true Keyshawn Reed's story is, he still named Rodney Doby and Rodney Doby's sister, Daima, as being involved. We need to talk to them both in the hopes of getting some consistent statements that we can build on. But Rodney Doby is a career criminal and we have no idea what to expect with him. 11 years ago, newlyweds Bud and Latina Matlock were shot dead when two gunmen broke into their home. We feel strongly that Arthur Kane Jr., CJ, was principally involved. And now Keyshawn Reed has named CJ and Rodney Doby as the shooters and Rodney's sister Daima as the driver. Rodney Doby is serving six years in prison for battery and fleeing police, but they brought him in today for us to question him. Hey, Mr. Doby, my name is Johnny Bonds. And I can't make you talk to me. I need my sister on the new call. She come up right now. Daima? No. No. She can't be in there with him and listen to what he has to say. Mm -hmm. She's part of this. Yeah. Rodney Doby doesn't even sit down, doesn't even let them just introduce themselves, just looks at everybody and says, I'll talk with you if I can have my sister Daima here. And I told her, this is your interview, it's not hers. 
She's here as a witness. When someone that you have to talk to gives you the ultimatum of, well, I'm not going to talk unless you let them come in the room with you, you have to let them come in the room with you. It's always better to get that person talking because then you might find lies or inconsistencies in their story. You tell me what you know about this case. I know that you were out what, doing something what? on a car. I went to AutoZone. I think that's why I got my Tramish Rebuild kit. The problem with him is he's got alibis that are pretty good. The main one being a receipt from an AutoZone that's a mile and a half away where he buys a transmission kit seven minutes after the shooting. We don't know if he got his receipt from somebody else to, to make an alibi, so we need to keep pushing. Half the people in this town think you and CJ killed him. Okay. We've probably had 10 different people tell us that CJ saying, I'm going to kill him, I'm going to kill him. He's pissed off. And I know you're tight with him. You heard him say that too. I, mean, I can't say that. I don't know. Rodney Doby's almost impossible to talk to. He has his alibi worked out, and it's very hard to rattle him. I guarantee you, when everything comes light, you'll come in, and I want I want an apology. Uh -huh. I'm not, my name. I haven't got anything to apologize to you for. I'm just I mean, telling I mean, you how you're doing your job. But my name ain't gonna be in it. I can guarantee you that. He's a cool customer. Of course he is. Of course, he's been around this block. Because of his alibi, we're probably not gonna be able to charge Rodney. Although, we feel that he has something to do with this. His sister, Daima, however, is CJ's alibi for the night of the murder. So she's gotta have something to say. She's the one that we have to push hard. She's the one that stands everything to lose. Now she's got a baby, her life's different. We want to talk to Diana immediately after we talk to Rodney Doby, and she she leaves. She's coming out. Oh, 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 oh. I told her to wait. Go. Diana does not want to do this interview. I've never seen anybody just bolt out of a room when no one's looking. One, two, three, six. So we go to track her down at home to see if we can bring her in. Can we talk to you for a moment? What is it? About the murder case. Bottom line is, we're going to file charges on CJ. He's going down. Well, then, okay. Okay, all right. Now, now, let me... Her husband comes to the door, you know, and, and she's staying... She ain't coming out. According to her, the way you question Rodney, you know, you question him like he was a suspect, and I'm afraid you might interrogate her the same way. This is her chance. She's in the driver's seat. You can't protect CJ anymore. I'm not trying to protect Leave our property because you're starting to upset my wife and you're starting to upset me. Okay, uh, I'm just telling you. Well, if y'all okay. subpoena her to court or whatever. No, it won't be a subpoena. It'll well, be a warrant. It'll be a warrant. Well, 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 uh, for her arrest? Yes. No way. Look, please leave my house. Let's see you with a warrant. She's worried. He, he doesn't know. He doesn't know at all. We get back here to the police station, 15 minutes later, they show up. But she won't talk unless we let her husband come in with her. We're going to get, because we ain't got much time, I got to get to work this evening. Not only did Keyshawn name Daima as the driver in the murders, but we also know that CJ and Daima are really close. So we feel like she knows something. Were you present? when C.J. bought a gun the day before? I was not present when C.J. bought a gun. I have never seen C.J. buy a gun. I have never seen C.J. with a gun. She also claims to have been with C.J. at Walmart at the time of the shooting. Whenever C.J. asked you to go to Walmart. He didn't ask me to go to Walmart. It was my idea to go to Walmart. C.J. stayed at the front of that store talking to somebody, and I went to the back of that store and to look for some boots. That's what I went in there for, and I know we went to Walmart. He stopped up there. When I came back, the boots that I had wasn't there. We came on back out and we left. She's digging her own hole. Who was driving? CJ. What car were you in? A black Mustang. No, it might have been brown. I don't know what color his car was. Bottom line, she's claiming to be with him the whole time. I know now you were with CJ all, all that evening. So if in a court of law we can prove CJ killed Bud, that could be a problem for you. That's right. You need to think about it. If we can prove CJ did the murder, that puts you into some bad problems. So what what are that leads me? What, I what mean, does that make her? Yeah, that's what I want to know. What does that make her? An uh, accessory to murder, to capital murder? It, it, I guess you it, it, it could be, or a witness, depends on what she knows. I don't have nothing to do with this murder. Nothing. CJ, I was with CJ. CJ so, had something to do with it. CJ that. didn't have nothing to do with this murder. He was with me. I didn't have nothing to do with this murder. Daima swears that she was with CJ when the murders happened. So if we can make a case against CJ for the murder, she's right there with him as either his driver or an accessory to helping him cover it up.
Bud and Latina Matlock were murdered in 2002, and their killers have never been brought to justice. I don't think anyone's home. Oh, no cars. Our main suspect, Arthur Kane Jr., CJ, and his friend, Daima, another suspect, both claimed they were at Walmart at the time of the murders. Police looked through the footage of the Walmart to determine if they were there and weren't able to, so they've always remained suspicious of this alibi. You think she's home? We're going to talk to a witness who claims that she saw them at Walmart around the time of the murders. If we're able to eliminate this Walmart alibi once and for all, then our case against CJ will be that much stronger. Okay, Tasha, we're looking into the case of Bud and Latina. And back then you ran with CJ, and that's what we wanted to talk to you about. I didn't run about. with him, that's my baby's dad. Okay. I remember it to this day, exactly where I was and what happened. It was my best friend's birthday. Okay. And we went to Walmart. And I saw CJ and Diamond. Yeah, they were like the first two registers right there as soon as you walk in. I just looked at him and I know I didn't speak okay, to so him. Okay, so are you saying that's the same night of the murder? Oh, yeah. The very same night. The very, I can remember. The okay, so if the murder happened at 8.15, call drops at 8.15. When do you see CJ and Diamond at Walmart? At 8 o'clock. Are you trying to, are you not their alibi witness? No, all right? we don't have good history. Please don't put yourself in the middle of trying to Why defend him or protect that? him because he's he's in this. I'm saying, but don't think that. All right, good. I was dating CJ. I was the girl in the house. I'm the one who had a baby by him, right. but he still had two other girls that were right. pregnant at the same time. So, okay. so I was done. People were worried that, that uh, CJ had threatened to hurt you if you did talk about what you knew. No. Me and Bud, we was friends. I cared about him. I, I mean, I wouldn't dare try to okay. protect or do anything. But I know without a shadow of a doubt, I saw CJ and Diana at Walmart. Latasha is very convincing. We never expected CJ's alibi to be this strong. So if we believe her, we're going to have to consider the possibility that he is not one of the actual shooters. Second room here. It won't take long. Right here. Just one day before the murders, a friend sold CJ a 38, the kind of weapon used in this murder. With CJ's alibi appearing more solid than we originally thought, it's important that we talk to this person to see if we're missing anything. So you know CJ, right? Yeah, no. That's the guy you sold the pistol to, correct? One, one day before Bud and Latina were killed. Yes, we are. He was worried back then that he was an accessory because he knew that he was going to kill him. I think that's bugging him now, too. And when you sold it to CJ, where were you at when you sold that gun? Oh, that house with uh, Dave. When you sold the gun? If she was in the house when the gun was sold. Exactly. This is a big hole in Daima's story, who claims to have never even seen CJ with a gun. I was not present when CJ bought a gun. I have never seen CJ buy a gun. I have never seen CJ with a gun. Daima knew what was going down. That is huge. Go ahead and have a seat. CJ's friend says that the sale of the 38 revolver to CJ took place in the home of his cousin. When came over and sold that gun to CJ, was this at your house this happened? Yes, sir. Okay. I was right there in the middle. Yeah. But everything was just going around me, and I didn't know what was going right, on. Right, right. Mr. Kane, deep down in my heart, I believe he either did it or had something to do okay. with it. There ain't no doubt. CJ did this. We're trying to figure out who was with him. I can guarantee Emma is right there with him because I recall the day it happened, he came and got her. We was in the house, me and her, and he was like, Emma. Come with me. I need you to go to Walmart with me. Oh, there we go. This is yet another hole in Daima's statement. He didn't ask me to go to Walmart. It was my idea to go to Walmart. Although she, like CJ, might have an alibi for around the time of the murder, she's not been telling us the truth. I do feel bad because it seemed like I kind of knew that they was going to get into it again and it probably was going to end up like that. Because that's all he talked about. It's killing him. It's killing him. We know CJ bought a gun the day before the murders. It was the same type of weapon used to shoot Bud and Latina. And now we have a strong witness saying that Daima was with CJ when he bought that weapon. 
But if CJ and Diama were seen at Walmart around the time the murder occurred, it's going to be tough to prove that CJ was one of the actual shooters. We've now caught Diama Brandon in so many lies that it makes a stronger case against her as an accessory for the commission of these murders. Diama and CJ both claimed that they were at Walmart at the time of the shooting. If we're going to believe this alibi, then we need to focus on the theory that CJ hired somebody else to do the killing for him. Back in 2005, Jerry Moore claimed that CJ hired him to do just that. J-E-R-R-Y. But there were questions back then about his credibility. So now we want to bring him in again. Because if his statement is consistent with the one he gave in 2005, then it raises the possibility that this is a murder for hire. Do you remember the incident between Bud and CJ? Yes, sir. What happened? They got into it and Bud broke his jaw. You know, I wouldn't look at him, you know, because his mouth was wired all up, man. He was sipping through a straw. And uh, he said, man, look at me. And he was like, um, look at me. Like, I can't look at you, you know, because you can barely talk. And he was like, man, that did this to me. He was like, you see what he done to me? He said he wanted him dead. And he told him he wanted him dead. And he offered me some money, you know, to do it, you know. Ah, there you go. How much did he offer you? Five thousand dollars. He offered me five thousand dollars. He told me, you know, he would give me the gun, and I told him I would do it. And the night, you know, that it all happened, I was locked up. And good thing, you know, I was. I probably, you know, I probably would have took the money. I got kids. I got kids. I got three kids. You know? Glad I was in jail. Man. I'm glad you were in jail for it. Somebody took that off of me. All right, Jerry. Jerry Moore has no reason to lie, and his statement is consistent with the one he gave back in 2005, which points to CJ as the mastermind. It looks like CJ planned it, paid for it, and then used Daima as his alibi witness. So now it's time for us to talk to CJ and see what his version of the story is. Well, it is going to be exciting. I'll watch the right, you watch the left while we're talking. Yeah, we'll let Kyle take the porch. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen in these situations. When you confront a suspect at his home, you expect the worst and hope for the best. Kyle, you take gun fire, I'm hauling ass. <laughs> <laughs> and I love you guys. <laughs> This is it. Bill might be that one. There's a truck here. We get out. Johnny and Kyle go to the front door. It's like a BB gun laying in the corner, leaning up against the wall. Did I hear something back? Yeah, somebody's looking. He's got a handgun license. We know that he, uh, he might be armed. Somebody coming. Somebody's coming. I heard somebody. Yeah. Hello. Come on, CJ. CJ, my name's Johnny Bond. My clothes on. Okay. He's got his jacket on, he's got a hat on, and he's putting his shoes on. And he comes out, and he's like ready to be handcuffed. What's up? Will you come talk to us about the murder case? Nope. You tell us who did it? You already talked to him. You can see automatically he realizes, well, they're not here to arrest me. They're just wanting to talk to me. We don't, don't think you pulled the trigger, CJ. Do. We just want to know who you pulled the trigger. The you think no more? I don't fuck up my whole life. Trying to put the gun in the right hand, man, because it's... It don't matter what hand, I don't care who hand y'all put it in. What is what you think gonna fix? Not shit. Will you let me say not something? Not nothing. What? If you didn't do it, you don't want to help us find out who did? I don't give who did it. It was just a sickening feeling to hear that, and I thought, this is it. We're done with this, and now here's a desperate person. Did you? You heard what the fuck I said, and you repeated it, so yeah, I don't give a... Let me ask you something. In my life, all, all these all right, years, wait, calm down. and you still telling people I did it. Calm down. So it don't let me, let me ask you something. And you ask me. Yeah, I do. And you ask me. Y'all question me before. Did you already not question me? Y'all already not question people. Y'all get your jaw broken by the the guy got killed. Yeah, but what does it matter? You weren't pissed you off about the broken jaw. I'm pissed off about you standing in my yard right now. What does that matter? I told you leave several times. You ain't left. So what does it matter how pissed off I was, or is, or gonna be, or whatever? What does it matter? If you didn't, what do does it matter? But I'm sick of y'all people. If, me and my family. I'm sick of it. Wait, get the wait, off my property. If you get off my property. Get off my property. Get off of it. Is that all you got to That's say? That's all I got to say. Are you sure not helping us? Get y'all? off of it. If you didn't You're not do it, me. Get if off you of didn't it. do it, you ought to be willing to help us. Thank you. Uh, you know, I don't think he wants to cooperate with this investigation. 
when he said that he didn't give a f about them, I thought to this day, no remorse for what happened to them, no remorse for what part you had in this, nothing, you know, still didn't care. And so it just solidified that we're going to get you. You are going to be held accountable for your part in these homicides. We now have a much clearer picture of CJ's involvement than they did back when they arrested him right after the murders. Morning. Hey. Hello, Chief. Nice to meet you. Stephen Sharon. And this time, we have one of the people involved with him caught in multiple lies. That, plus all the other evidence we've gathered, will hopefully be enough for the prosecutors. Well, it's been a long road, but I believe that we're at the point that we can at least file on two of them. We know that CJ told numerous people that he was going to kill Bud. That's all he talked about. It's killing him. It's killing him. Jerry Moore says CJ offered me $5,000 to kill Bud. He said that he wanted to be And CJ's friend sold this 38 revolver to CJ night before the homicide. That's the guy you sold the pistol to, correct? Bud and Latina are killed with a 38 revolver said that CJ confessed to killing both of them. The thing to consider is when we're talking about capital murder. And we've already had to dismiss against him once. So we have a limited amount of time to bring this to trial. On CJ, we do. In Arkansas, you have a right to a speedy trial, and that means that the prosecutors have to be prepared to go to trial within 12 months of the suspect being charged. Because CJ had already been arrested and held for nine months before the charges were dropped, the prosecutors now have only three months from the time they arrest him to bring this case to trial, which means that everything has to be all nice and orderly before they charge him a second time. Let's talk about Diama. Diama and CJ come to Diama's boyfriend's house and says that he sells this gun to CJ for $50 night before the homicides and Diane is there. I have never seen CJ buy a gun. I have never seen CJ with a gun. But the main thing is, Diana is trying to alibi him the entire time. We have saying that right before the homicides, he came and got it. CJ's pressing her to go with him to Walmart. I need you to go to Walmart with me. We think they went there on purpose to, to say, here we are. CJ left with me. We stopped at Walmart together. She knew it was going to happen, and she's with them, and she's trying to alibi CJ. Wow. I think Diama is going to be an integral part of this. Okay. And I think that she will eventually break and tell everything that happened here. So we all acknowledge that even though we've learned a lot more about these guys, whoever the third or fourth player is, whether it's Rodney Doby, Keyshawn, or Lewis Mitchell, is still up in the air. Mm -hmm. It's a lot clearer than it's ever been. Oh, absolutely. I think y'all have done a very good job of tying up some loose ends and some questions that there were from the original investigation. I don't think that I have any problem with CJ uh, as far as being a charge on that. I think that's pretty clear that we've got enough. I don't mind charging Diamond right now. That's going to break the dam. I know. I can't, I'm, I can't contain myself. <laughs> I think it's wonderful that these prosecutors are ready to go forward, and I hope that they're very proud of this case. Kelly. Nice to, meet you. nice to meet you, baby. This is Dale Train. This is the athlete. Yes, it is. I heard about what a good ball player you are. Hi. Go ahead, Jim. Well, we've had a productive week. Okay. And, and this morning we were able to present some information to the prosecutors, and they are going to pursue charges. It's going to be just a little while because we've got some more work to do. But I can tell you there are at least two right now that will be charged. Okay. It's going to happen. We appreciate you so much. And for Thank your own you. benefit, we don't want to tell you all the names because everybody's going to be asking y'all, right. who is it and who did what, and tell us what you know. And that's why you can just say, I don't know, but I'm good. We talked and we prayed among ourselves because we know that if there is relief for us, there's going to be sorrow for somebody else. And it, we're even concerned about that. Of course. We are a small community, and we have to look out for each other. We have to be a village. Well, you're a sweet lady to be thinking yes. about all that, too. 
It's amazing to be able to feel that when your child was killed in cold blood. To have a big enough heart and enough faith in the world, in, in humanity, I couldn't do it. I speak on behalf of my family. I just want to say thank you for all that you've done. Thank you. And we appreciate all the effort that Malvern Police Department put forward. Thank you. So we're going to let you go home. So great to meet thank you. Thank you very you much. Too. We've carried this for a long time. It's weighed heavy on my heart. Basketball exactly. game tonight. Do you? I mean, we still have some work to do, but it was very important to let them know we made great progress. Feels good. It's huge. <laughs> it's huge. Right. Call them once a week, baby. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Seriously, okay. they're going to move forward. They're going to make progress, and we all feel very confident they're going to find everybody else soon. Okay, so you take care. All right. Thank you, baby. To know that we helped make that happen, it's a wonderful feeling.